A friend of mine, knowing I like to tinker with electronics, asked me if I knew how to fix a turntable he had from many decades ago. I don't have any experience at this, because at the time when turntables were popular, I knew nothing of electronic repairs. And now that I'm a little more versed in electronic repairs, I've not had an interest in a turntable for decades. I decided to take on this challenge, thinking, how hard can it be? I'll find out next. My first thought was to check if I can hear any rattling when shaking the device. I thought I had heard something earlier, but it may have been the cable hitting the case. The device looks very simplistic, with only two buttons and a small knob. I'm not sure which is the power button, since one is for the RPM and the other only has the text STOP next to it. I'm not even sure what the tiny dial is for. I plugged it in thinking the power button would light up and make itself more obvious, but that didn't really help. There was a light, but it was more decoration than anything. The turntable wasn't spinning, but didn't seem stuck when I spun it by hand. There was a slight sound of a motor I could hear. I could hear a slight rubbing or grinding noise. When trying to figure out where it came from, I noticed it was loudest towards the left rear of the case. I'll slowly work on dismantling parts. The cover seemed the easiest and I was glad it was held in place by gravity. I'm not sure if this is how it's supposed to be, but one other thing that was held in place by gravity was the turntable. I looked over the parts that fell out and luckily nothing seemed to be damaged. Now that the device is partially opened, maybe I can at least see how the turntable is supposed to work. I plugged it in and could hear a humming noise. When listening, I realized it came from the tiny friction roller near the left rear, exactly where I heard the grinding noise earlier. With some guesswork, along with trial and error, I eventually figured out what makes the turntable spin. The loose rubber band looks like it belongs around the inner rim of the turntable's underside and that portion of the turntable rests against the friction roller. This setup would spin the turntable. The problem I can immediately see is that the rubber band is very stretched and no longer fits tightly around the rim. I did tear down the turntable down to the electronic circuits but didn't record it since I didn't really know what to expect. The electronics looked fine to me so I reassembled that section and focused on the turntable. I was able to figure out how the stretched belt worked with the turntable and reassembled it enough to do this simple test. As you can see, the turntable has some trouble spinning continuously because of the loose belt, but I'm hoping if I fix that, the turntable and arm will function more smoothly. Rather than buying a new belt, I'm going to see if I can DIY one using an old bicycle tube. It seems like an easy task to accomplish. I've already cut the valve section off and I'm now cutting down one of the seams for the length of the tube to create a large sheet of rubber. The sheet is very wrinkled, so I ironed it on the low setting on my Cricut, which is approximately 125 degrees Fahrenheit. The ironing seemed to flatten the big crease down the middle, but the section of rubber that used to be the inner diameter of the tube has a lot of wrinkles for its entire length and is a little harder to flatten. I'm going to also try holding the tube over this pot of boiling water. I've wrapped the tube around two taped together 4 inch PVC caps which have holes drilled to let the heat in so the tube will be heated from the in and outside. Once the water was boiling, I used whatever I could find to hold the tube over the steam. I tried using something that wouldn't block the holes drilled in the PVC. There was no set time I planned for, but I did hold it like this for about 5 minutes. The belt has not flattened out as much as I'd hoped for, but I'll work with what I have to see if I can produce the best possible results without too much effort. The next step is to cut a straight edge down the length of the rubber sheet, which will be one edge of the belt. I'm using a razor with any long enough straight edge to cut the first edge. I had planned to use the straight edge and razor to also cut the second edge, but found I had a hard time getting the wrinkled rubber to stay straight under the straight edge. I ended up cutting the second edge using a scissors, but didn't get that on video. The DIY belt did come out a little crooked and wider than the original. 
I used tire patch glue to bond the ends together. It wasn't a permanent bond, but strong enough for its purpose as a belt. Here's a recreation of the steps I followed when gluing the belt together using the bicycle tire patch glue. Using sandpaper, sand both surfaces to be glued together. Following the tire patch kit's instructions, apply the glue to both surfaces that were sanded. Let this sit for about a minute. Press both glued surfaces together, making sure they're aligned as straight as possible. Weigh it down with something and let the glue cure for 12 hours. Tire patch glue dries a lot quicker than that, but I left it for 12 hours just in case. Here's a shot of the new belt on top and the old one below. The new one is quite a bit wider than the original by about double the width. Also, you can't see it here, but the new belt is not cut perfectly even in width. It was tough to do that using a scissors. I'm hoping the friction roller will still keep the belt aligned correctly since its edges are beveled to form a recess for the belt to sit in. Here's a clip of how I mounted the belt, mounted the platter, then stretched the belt over the friction roller. It's a fairly simple assembly. I'm done fixing what my friend gave me this turntable for, which was to figure out why the turntable wasn't spinning. During testing, I noticed power to the device turns on and off as you move the arm. As the arm is moved out of the cradle to play a record, the power turns on and the turntable starts spinning. When the record is at the end and done playing, the arm automatically moves back into the cradle and powers off. Something else I found wrong, but it's an easy fix for my friend to handle, is the broken stylus. I'll remove the stylus assembly to better see how the stylus is attached. To remove the stylus cartridge from the assembly, pull it away in the direction the stylus electrical contact inserts into the assembly. Looking closely at the stylus, you can see that the stylus itself is missing from the tiny arm sticking out. My friend will have to pick up a new one, but that's if they still exist. This was an interesting project since it was a device from a very long ago past. My worry was an inability to find parts, but luckily the parts required were minimal and partially DIYable. I hope this video helps you think of different ways to repair your outdated but potentially working classic devices. Leave your questions and comments in the comment section below. That's all I have for now and I'll catch you in the next video.